Hi, Sharon here from Little Bell Lane Creations. I'm popping into your Instagram feed as promised to share some tips and tricks on getting these centers for your Prudence quilt. I've had a few DMs land in my inbox this week, so I thought I'd address all of them and all the various questions that I've had via a little IGTV. If I can get it uploaded, recording this live, no takes no cuts no editing no nothing so excuse me if I fumble my words a lot of the questions this week have been about achieving the kaleidoscope centers for this prudence block now I can promise you they are nowhere near as hard as what they may look they are quite achievable for anyone even the beginner once you know a few tips and tricks and understand how your templates work you too can be achieving some amazing results. So these three I've just shown you have kaleidoscope centers. So that just basically means they're cut from pieces of fabric that are symmetrical. So if you put a line down the middle of the fabric, the left side is going to be exactly the same as the right side. So that's one type. If you're not playing with symmetrical fabrics, you can get some pretty cool centers that have movement in them. So you can see I've cut the same piece of fabric. It's not symmetrical, so therefore I'm getting the movement in my centre. And that's another classic one. It just selects the movement. So what we're going to do today, we're going to address how to get this type of effect in the centre of your Prudence blocks. So first up, we have the four templates that come with this kit. When you buy the pattern, you have the option of the pattern with the templates. So you will just get the pattern and the templates, which is awesome if you've got a scan and cut machine because the shapes are actually in the pattern that you can load them and save them to your scan and cut and cut your own papers. Alternatively, you will need the pattern template and papers kit. So that means it comes with enough pre-cut papers. They've been laser cut. This is just one packet to make the entire quilt. So you won't need to reuse any of the papers, but all the papers in my kit that are available through my Australian Wholesaler are reusable papers. It's a card, see it's a card and it has like a gloss finish on it. So these are reusable many times. I just keep reusing them till either I accidentally tear one or one of my pugs runs off with it, which happens more than I care to admit. Another thing I'd like to share with you about these templates, move those, we'll concentrate predominantly on this one. If you notice, can I get that there? Can you see the line straight down the middle? Oops, straight down there. Hang on, focus. Yep, that's a center line. So it makes it easy when you want a kaleidoscope, cut your centers for your block, that the center line's there to help you. I've also added the center line to that one. So this is the piece that goes out there. And then this piece here is here and it has, move those out of the way so you can see through, it has the cross-reference centre line. So this helps you to centre designs whether they're being kaleidoscope fussy cut or not. This piece is not a kaleidoscope fussy cut one, but this one is. And as you can see, it's got the centre line that helps you centre it rambling sorry <laughs> the papers when you look at a perspex template especially if you're new to epp the templates have your seam allowance for your fabric built into them all my templates have a quarter inch seam allowance built in so if i put a paper behind here and line it up you'll see that the paper if i line it up straightly sits at that perforated line see that perforated line there that marks what you're going to be able to see on the finished piece of fabric that you've cut once you've basted it okay so what we need to do next moving forward I don't want to waste too much time so let's go you need to find a piece of fabric here's a piece that I've pulled from my stash I've tried to pick a nice light print to show up on the camera better so you can see this print here this deer here is a symmetrical design when Chula Pink's drawn it, she's only drawn one half of her design and then mirror imaged it to the other half. So this is a nice, easy, symmetrical design that will allow you to get a beautiful fussy cut kaleidoscope effect in your blocks. In your pattern, you will have a fussy cut viewer. 
If you're new to fussy cutting and English paper piecing, let me move this out of the way, this can be a huge help in assisting you to see what fussy cuts are available to you. So when this comes in your pattern, you will have to cut this centre square out. Grab yourself a fussy cutting mirror. Now I'm going to try and do, I don't know if it's going to be able to show. Ah, oh, Try and, here we go. Sorry, just manipulating it so you can see. So you'll sit your mirror on this line. So you line it up nice and just slide it across your fabric so you can see all the different potential fussy cuts that are available for you on this fabric. When you see something that you like, that's the deer's head there, but looks nothing like a deer's head in the mirror. Okay, done one way, not sure. Always turn your fabric over the opposite way. So now my deer is upside down. And come down here. I'm going to put my mirror back on. And sorry, I know you can't see it at the moment, but just get me a little lined up. Okay, so the deer's upside down. I've got it centered on the design. And I've got my camera in my way. I need to hold my fabric. Uh, no, I need to move it so you can see it. Here we go. Okay, so what we're going to do, see if I can work it. Ah! See, told you there were no edits. I just, my <laughs> tripod for my camera's in the way. So you will just start sliding it along your fabric to pick out which fussy cut you want. Okay, so I've already cut three of the shape I'm going to show you today. So I'm going to come back here. I want a fussy cut that is going to highlight these aqua bits at the top. So I've decided, yep, that's the fussy cut I want because I'm cutting from a symmetrical design. I can see what it's going to look like in the mirror. Remove your mirror. Have a look at what is left in your fussy cutting viewer. This is what you want to achieve when you have finished basting your papers. If you want, you can put your template over and remove that. So then you can look down, and I appreciate you can't get in nice and close, but you can look down. I'm going to turn this around so he's up the right way for me. Hopefully I can manipulate him so he's closer for you. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for a reference point. Remember how I had this line in the center of my template? I'm lining that up with the center of that aqua decoration on his head there and then I'm looking down and going okay I need a reference point that's going to allow me to cut this multiple times from exactly the same piece of fabric I'm looking down and in this hole there is that white bit of his nose so I'm going to put that back and go yep that's what I want so my reference point is the white bit on his nose I'm then going to grab my sandpaper board sandpaper board down I'm going to turn my fabric over and I'm actually going to find a deer that's at the end so I don't have to argue with a lot of fabric. Now, remember, I'd eyed off this white dot here. Let me see if I can pick it up for you. This was going to be the reference point in the whole of my template. So let me grab my template. This is hard to do for a camera. So... I want to get all of that aqua bit, oops, sorry, all of that aqua bit within my template shape. So I'm sitting down here. That hole is at the top of that white bit that I'd reference. So I'm going to lay this down because I cannot do this in the air. So I'm just going to make sure I've got that hole lined up and center with the white bit that I'd chosen. I'm making sure my perforated line is straight down the center of my design and with my fabric on my sandpaper board and my sew line pencil I am just going to draw around my shape now I'm doing this on a sandpaper board because it keeps the fabric gripped and the fabrics not going to pucker and slide off everywhere the dots in the template are actually there for a reason if you choose to use them I am just going to mark that dot at the bottom if you want, you can mark the dots all the way around. But all I really needed to do was to mark that dot, that reference point at the bottom. Take your template away, repeat it three more times so you've got four of that exact print. I'm only doing one today to save you time because I have three that I prepared earlier. Okay, 
Now you want to come and cut this out. If this was in the middle of a piece of fabric, say over here, I don't want to cut in from the edge and ruin my potential fussy cuts from down here. Now I don't, I could just cut in from the edge here because I'm not going to get a fussy cut from the top. But what I want you to get into the habit of doing is folding it over, snipping on the drawn line, putting your scissors in, and just cut. Sharon, if you stay in the view of the camera, and just cut out on the drawn line. Doesn't have to be exact. We just want to, if anything, it needs to be on the outside of the drawn line. Okay. So what I've created, there's my fussy cut and the bit of fabric I'm going to baste. What I've created is a hole in my fabric. So this is what we call Swiss cheese. When you do a lot of fussy cutting, you will find lots of holes in your fabric. But what this means, if I want to come and fussy cut a square, I can come right up close to where I've snipped that bit of fabric out and I'm not getting any, if I was doing that with a rotary cutter, I'm going to go a few millimetres each way and potentially that's going to ruin my next fussy cut. So doing by scissors, I'm not wasting any unnecessary fabric as such. So let's throw that one away. Let's move on. Oh, stuck. Get rid of that. Okay, here's the three I've prepared earlier. So what we want to do, we are now going to grab a paper, throwing my glue pen away, and we're going to grab a glue pen. Yes, I'm a glue baster. I don't thread baste. I don't have time to thread baste. So these dots that we put on our fabric... Can you see the dots? Is it going to focus? Yes. Can you see the dots that I've marked from my template? So they're my reference point. I would be able to remember my reference point today because I'm only cutting the one lot. But if I was sitting down at my table and doing a whole heap of fussy cutting, I might not get back to this bit of fabric for a week or so. So it's just handy to mark at least one reference point so you know what you were thinking at the time. So now I'm going to do is line the point there up with that dot. And lay it down and I've got my camera in an awkward position hang on and we're going to glue baste so when you're holding your glue pen I actually want you to hold it like a pen you'll notice that the end of my glue pen is angled is that going to focus see it's angled I don't want to see anybody straight down dabbing and getting the whole surface of the glue pen it's going to be too much glue on your fabric and on your paper and if you're having a hard time removing your papers from your EPP project, chances are it's because you've used too much glue. So what we're going to do, we're going to start at one side, we're going to swipe our glue a few millimetres inside the paper and fold it over and push it down. So that's side one. So side two, we're going to start on the fabric and we're going to swipe down. So again, I've started on the fabric and I've gone down. And I've got a few millimetre gap here. The reason we're leaving the gap is because when we come to sew it, we're not going to get a needle clogged up with glue. So this one, again, fabric across to the paper. I only need to swipe once, fold it over. Have you noticed what I do as I work around? I tend to leave my finger on the corner. I've just folded over. Just that extra pressure for that extra few seconds just holds it into place nicely. So nicely. So my fingers back down there and my last side. So I'm going to go fabric, paper, fabric. Okay, can you see that? Let's see if I can get, doesn't want to focus. And again, just flip it and fold it over. So we're finished with the glue pen. Put the lid on because it dries out really quickly. So when you've done that four times and you've got your four pieces, you can put them and see that that was the look that you were going to get in the mirror. So now we come to sew them together. And this is a little trick that once you know about it, it's super easy. I'm just putting my thimble on. My preferred thimble combination is one of these little metal thimbles in a rubber thimble. I was one of these people that could never find a thimble that I was comfortable with, but this combination works well for me. So that's my effect. You can see my metal bit there that stops the needle going through. And I can also pop it out for my nails. So grab 
I keep my needles pre-threaded in a clover thread dome too. So all I've got to do is pull it out. You notice, oh, can we see? Can you see how bent it is? I bend my needles all the time. Okay, I'm going to knot my thread. And I like to use a thread balm. So this is my thread balm that I release with Wendy at the next stitch. Just opens one-handed. I put it in. I swipe it across. I close it. And then I run my hand over my thread to make sure there's no lumps. Okay, here's the tricky bit. And this is how you get really cool results that are almost millimetre perfect. Now, trying to line it up for you in the camera and do it for myself. When you're English paper piecing, any little tails like this, just pull them out of the way. Now, can you see what's happening there? Along this seam where I've got my two pieces right sides facing, can you see the colours change? Can you see this white bit? How one side white, the other side white? That's what you want to look for when you're sewing your pieces together. If you can keep those together as you sew, your results when you open are going to be that millimetre perfect result. Okay, so I'm going to show, because we have some new people, my first stitch, I'm taking just a couple of threads of the fabric from each side. I'm going to pull it through. So I've got my knot. I'm going to go through again. Now, if you feel any resistance when you're doing this, you're hitting the papers. So take your needle out and try again. So I'm just starting. Oh, can we see white on white? It's not good. I'm going to put my needle through that loop two to three times and I'm going to pull it. That's what I call securing my stitch at the start. So then we're going to go back and we're going to stitch along the length of the papers. Now we want to stitch the most direct route. So what we're stitching is straight across. Yes, I've got the crooked needle, but I'm going straight across my papers. We're not going over on an angle. We're going straight across. Now see how I've got, can you catch that on there? I hope so. I've got my needle through the white bits. That means once I've stitched this, those white bits, when I open it, are going to be right next to each other and help give that flawless kaleidoscope effect. Okay, we just keep, and again, I've got my camera in an awkward spot, which doesn't make stitching very smooth. But now something I also do when I get halfway along, I like to secure my stitch again. So I just go in. I leave a little, can you see the loop? I know it's it's hard to see, but leave me a loop there. And I'm going to put my needle through it two to three times and pull. So again, that secures my stitch. So if I was stitching something along here that, say, was two inches long and for some reason I was a bit rough and I broke my thread, I know that within the last half inch or so I've secured my thread. So I don't need to go back to the start and re-sew. I would just go, you know, maybe an inch back and start re-sewing and go along. So I don't have to re-stitch the whole seam. Okay, so let's quickly finish this. And we don't need a thousand stitches per inch. I think I do about, on average, when I count, and I don't count very often only when people ask me, I do about 16 stitches per inch. Okay, so I've got to the very end. I'm right at the very end. I've got another loop. So I'm going to secure my stitch again. Oops, totally missed the loop. Let's try that again. Okay, so one, two, three. Now, because I'm going to cut my thread, I will actually do a second secure stitch. Probably don't need to, but I've always done it. It just makes the OCD a bit happier. And I haven't got my glasses on, I can't see properly. Okay, so that's done. Cut, no need to bury. And let's open and have a look at our finished result. Can you see how the white bits... Because when I was stitching, I made sure they lined up on my seams, that they match perfectly. So you'll go and do the same thing for the other two bits. So these you will sew together and then you'll come together and you'll face them. So you'll sew two halves and then you'll face your two halves together. So imagine those back two were sewn together. You are going to do the same thing along this seam. See how we've got the white bits and we've got the aqua bits and then we've got the orangey bit here and over here again. So we've got the yellow that matches and it changes to the white. They're the bits that you want to stitch 
shows really clearly there at the moment, doesn't it? So as you're stitching, make sure your stitches go straight through there so that when you've finished your block and you open it up, you get that awesome kaleidoscope effect where it's, you know, it can be millimetres off, it doesn't matter. Once you've taken your papers out, the fabric relaxes. So there you go. I hope that answers some questions. If you've got any more, please just let me know. Okay. I know I will get questions about something, so let me show you. My thimble combination. This is the thimble that I use underneath, the metal one that's underneath, and then the rubber that goes over the top is in two sizes, so that's my thimble combination. Okay, the Soline glue pen is what I use, and I only use a Soline glue pen. I don't use craft sticks. The glue, it's too wide. You're not going to get precision. It's going to gunk up. It's just yuck. <laughs> Your pencil, this pencil has a white lead, so you can actually buy the grey lead. So I have my pencil. It came with the white lead, but I also have the grey lead. So I change it. If I'm working on a really dark fabric, then I can change my lead to white and go from there. The needles that I choose to use are the Tulip Milliners 10, but I go for the big eye. And please, when it says big eye, it's not a huge eye, but it is bigger than the regular eye on the milliners. So these come in packs of six. So what I do is I pre-thread my clover dome with the six needles. I work with six needles all the time. So as I start losing or breaking or overbend them, you see I'm down to five. I've got these four plus the one I was just stitching with. So once I get down to about two or three, or if they just don't feel as sharp, I throw them out. I grab another box of needles and go again. The reason I also love this is it fits in the middle of my... Um, superior threads bottom line donut so you don't have to have one of these but i find these are awesome if you're stitching with a fabric that's you know like this one here that was purple if i did that in a cream thread it's likely to show ever so slightly so i just chose the light purple and your stitches vanish this one here i have stitched in i've stitched in a green so I'm going to hesitate to say that I use that green to stitch those. My blue one, let me have a look. I may have done a blue. That's, no, I didn't. I did a cream. So I've just used my regular cream. So a colour that I use a lot of, I invest in the bigger spools. And as you can see, I'm almost out of the spools. I do also use the Oriful 80 weight. But I have found that a lot of people find that hard because it's a cotton thread. It can snap if you're a bit too zesty with your um, pulling of your thread. So, But I can switch from one to the other. I just happen to have this one out today. So this is what you're looking for when you go to buy your Clover Dome if you're interested. And the Superior Bob's Donut looks like that too. So they're all available in my shop if you're so inclined. No sales pressure tactics here. Any questions, feel free to DM me. I hope this has helped in some regards and maybe I should do this more often. Maybe not. We'll see. Thanks, guys. Bye.